Some spectacular cloudscapes here in Texas last night as some showers pushed through the area. We have some unusual weather going on in the Pacific Northwest, so the supporter video is going to be moved to Friday. There's the KGW webcam showing the Portland skyline on a record-breaking day. They reached 115. That's going to break yesterday's all-time record of 112, which broke the previous all-time record of 107. A lot of all-time records were also broken yesterday, as you can see right there. And we will probably surpass those records in a lot of other cities that are not on this chart. And here's a breakdown of all the records expected today. The dark brown colors you see across Washington and inland Oregon, those are likely going to break the record for the date at the very least. The red ones are not quite going to get there. And we cannot forget the northeastern U.S. They've got a heat wave going on there. 96 just south of Boston. That's going to break a record for the date there. Also in the western part of the state, also 96. And strangely enough, some cool weather in Texas and New Mexico the dark blue colors, those are going to be the coldest maximums for the date. 72 at Albuquerque, 80 in El Paso, and 73 at Amarillo. The weather map for this afternoon shows a polar high moving into the north central U.S. Right out ahead of it, this low pressure system in the Omaha area with a cold front extending down into Kansas. We've also got this Bermuda high. This is kind of an extension of that oceanic high out to the east there, and it's creating this ridge extending towards the Mississippi River region. A couple of MCSs out there in Illinois through Missouri into Kansas. And then in Texas, we have this inverted trough extending from this low in Mexico. The pressures are a little bit higher than usual due to some cold air in New Mexico and Texas. However, at this time, I'm not really sure I'm ready to call that a frontal system. And then up in the Pacific Northwest, low pressure there just west of Portland, kind of in the Portland area actually. And you can see those warm temperatures out in that region. Easterly flow is predominating, and that's bringing some very dry, heated air from the inland regions into the Portland area and the Willamette Valley. This shows you some of the trajectories that were coming into the Portland area yesterday. They've had some loiter time out over Alberta and Montana. Very dry conditions, some heating out over the mountains, just kind of pumping heat into those parcels. And of course, the descent during the 36 hours leading into the Portland area there. That descent, that's some pretty extensive sinking there. If we go back about 48 hours and look at the air that was over far northwestern Montana, that air originated from about five to 600 millibars. And obviously, if we push that down dry debatically, that's going to warm substantially up to about 100, 105 degrees. And we're also adding more heat into the air than we are removing it through radiation. So what we had there was kind of a perfect storm for a strong heat wave. And there's the flip side of the coin, the drought conditions. Dry air heats very readily. And with the strong solar heating drying out the vegetation, we get kind of a positive feedback loop going. The more solar heating we get, the drier the vegetation, the drier the vegetation, the more heating. And there it is, the soil moisture anomaly. That's part of the problem there. A lot of areas running about 50% of normal. 
and the northeastern U.S. enduring a heat wave of their own. Most impressive is Boston there with 95 over 71. That 71 dew point means it's quite muggy. And I know a lot of people there go without air conditioning, so that kind of condition there is probably quite brutal. 94 over 69 at Windsor Locks, 94 over 71 at Poughkeepsie. And what else do we got? Yeah, I got to check in on Philadelphia down there at the bottom, showing 93 over 71. We have a new tropical storm this afternoon. We have Danny there. Sustained winds 40 knots with west-northwest movement at 14 knots, which means it's coming on shore. So that'll be out of the picture pretty quickly as friction tears up that circulation, leaving us with a tropical depression overnight and some remnants coming into the Atlanta area tomorrow. And there's Danny about 14, 15 hours ago, moving towards South Carolina. And you'll notice a low cloud circulation right there. Those are the warmer clouds seen on infrared imagery. See a little spiral right there. And further to the west, we have the enhanced cirrus. That shows up very readily on infrared. And finishing out the loop from around daybreak, you can see that circulation heading to the shore and a few new thunderstorm towers around Charleston. No, this is not your biopsy results. This is dust coming into the Atlantic as seen from the Aqua and Terra satellites. Here's the Western African region. This is the Atlantic itself. And then we have the United States off to the left. There you go. Maybe that'll help a little bit. So a week ago, a bunch of dust storms out in the Sahara. And you're going to see this plume move westward. Looks like it moves maybe about three to 400 miles a day. And there's the leading edge on the 27th. That's yesterday. And that brings us up to today, a little pocket of it, reaching the Windward Islands. So projecting that forward, that could be in the Gulf maybe in about three or four days. There's always the possibility it could kind of diffuse around Mexico and Latin America. But this time of year, it's pretty common to see dust making it up into the southern U.S., so we'll have to watch for that maybe right around the weekend. And this is an example of what it looks like. This is some old footage from last summer. Typically, the dust is not noticeable. You're not going to see like dust all over your car or anything. But the sky will look very hazy. The sun will look like a pale disk. And if you're a pilot, you'll notice that visibility is are often restricted to about three to five miles. In Texas today, as you can see, we've got great visibility. However, we are in very deep tropical moisture. We've had a mix of showers moving across much of the state, very cool conditions and a very windswept, torn, wet looking sky. Let's take a look at the soundings. There's what the sounding looks like for that video clip that you just saw. Yeah, the sounding is saturated all the way up to about 30,000 feet. This is a classic tropical sounding that's kind of unstable. And you can see the steeper lapse rate in the bottom part when it's leaned over to the left like that with height to the left of this saturation at about. That's pretty significant. That means with that much moisture right there in the lower levels, when that condenses and rises, it's going to follow that white line right there, which means it's going to carry it into this region here where it's much warmer than the environment around it. So that means, yeah, this 1,000 to 2,000 cape, that's pretty significant. Now, you notice how low the D cape is right there, 233. That's very common in these tropical air masses. That's a far cry from the 1,000 to 1,500 values we saw when we had that feeble, severe season, severe weather season that was getting started up on the southern plains back in May. 
And you can see those downdraft temperatures, 68 degrees, that's fairly warm compared to the 50s and lower 60s that are common during severe weather events. Now, what differentiates this from a typical summertime situation is we have a little bit of shear here from zero through one kilometer, a bit of shear. And that makes it sort of typical of what we see in the deeper tropics because they get a little shear like that also with the strong trade winds. It's not completely dead like we typically see in Tennessee, Arkansas during July when you have a subtropical ridge parked overhead. So that's what gives us kind of a ominous looking sky there. Here's another visualization of that moisture. This time of year, we like to use the precipitable water and that's a measure of how much moisture there is in the entire vertical column of the atmosphere. Widespread two inch amounts and that's part of the reason the sky looks the way it does. And we can see that moisture axis runs all the way from Southeast Texas up into Missouri. And we can also see that that moisture has a pretty long fetch coming from the Southern Gulf of Mexico and maybe the Caribbean. So possibly some of that dust may make its way up here later this week. And we can also see Tropical Storm Danny right there off the South Carolina coast that has a moisture plume of its own and also a dry slot coming in along the south side into the Orlando and Cape Canaveral area. And also lots of moisture in New Mexico. We've got very cool conditions, partly due to all that cloud material and also that easterly flow coming in from Texas that gives us upslope flow, adiabatic cooling, and, and widespread evaporational cooling as that precip falls into a somewhat drier air mass. So let's run the animation forward. We can see some of that moisture does make it into Arizona. Other parts of the moisture field heads up into the Midwest. And by the time we get up to Friday, we see widespread inch and a half precipitable water in Arizona. And the moisture not really going anywhere in Arizona. And it looks like another frontal boundary moving southward. That's a rough layout of the fronts. Some drier air coming into Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and pushing a boundary down into Texas and Louisiana. So we should see precip chances going up through that area as the week goes on. Well, here's how it looks in Texas with all those showers, but let's head west. Yep, looks rainy and tropical in West Texas, and even in the Davis Mountains, Guadalupe Mountains out in that area, the Trans-Pecos, a lot of thunderstorm activity. More showers and thunderstorms around the El Paso, Las Cruces, and Silver City area. The El Paso radar picking up some distant thunderstorms around Safford. And that's got a severe thunderstorm warning on it. And they're expecting winds and some small hail with that thunderstorm. But really, we have to pull up some of the Arizona radars. And it does look spotty at the moment, but I would expect to see a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity in Arizona tomorrow. And there's that tropical moisture and upslope flow. Basically, given... New Mexico, a monsoon pattern, and it looks like it's trying to get started there in Arizona. You can see those storms firing around Safford. Not much going on in the Tucson area, Douglas Bisbee, but some towering cumulus on some of the higher peaks. The monsoon definitely in full force in Mexico, and we have Tropical Storm Enrique right down here near the opening to the Gulf of California. That's moving basically about like that. The circulation on the east side will help advect moisture towards Arizona. And that'll work synergistically with that moisture flow coming into Arizona. Here's the precipitable water anomaly. You can see Enrique coming up from the south and delivering another slug of moisture into Arizona near the end of the week. 
And there's the damage checking in on Oregon at 4 p.m. Pacific. 115 at Portland. 118 at the Dallas. 106 at Salem. I think they were up to... Yeah, they were quite a bit higher last hour. They were 116 at 3 p.m. Pacific. And checking up north, uh, some good news. Seattle 104 instead of the 111 that was forecast. So that's certainly great. And it is especially good news that it will be cooling tomorrow. Lytton up to 115 once again, tying yesterday's 115, which set the all-time record for Canada for the entire country. And taking a quick peek further up north, 102 there at Kesnell, 99 at Prince George, and a very toasty 93 at Fort Nelson. And going up further north, we do see 80s, which is hot, but that's not really record setting. And that'll do it for another edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining, and hopefully we'll see you all again here tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.